What I wanted to prepare for you guys today was what you might expect on your first flight review. But what happened was a little bit more fitting for somebody who's a frequent flyer, since an instructor can make a flight review about anything that they want. I thought this episode was so jam-packed with fantastic information, I kind of just let it roll. So let me know what you guys think about this kind of episode in the comments section, and simply enjoy watching me struggle a little bit, and the wisdom of Instructor Tyler. control check and flight instrument set. So oh. you want to ask a question about that? Yeah, so that's at 500 feet, right? What's field elevation here? Do you want me to look it up or just answer from memory? Huh, look it up if you don't know it. Uh, 122 feet. All right, so what cause? Say, you know, we shut the plane down, we walked in, came back, and boom, it's at reading 500. We didn't adjust this at all. What made it read 500? So of 122. If, if, if it thinks that you went up in altitude, that yep. means the pressure dropped. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So we got a low pressure. Think of it just like a balloon. Uh, same thing if we take a balloon and we climb to a higher altitude, that balloon's going to expand, and that's going to make that needle move up. Same thing here, the aneloid wafer, that balloon expanded, and the reason it was allowed to expand because of the pressure outside dropped, so low pressure system moved in. Lower pressure, I should say. Okay, uh, directional gyro is set, so I don't have any enunciators in this plane, so we're good to flip it over and do before takeoff. Fuel selector, we're already on the proper tank. Flap set, do one notch for takeoff in this airplane. At least that's what I usually do. Trim is up here, and it's indication is good, and it's set to neutral. All right. Doors, you want to get yours lashed, I'll shut the window. Yeah, I'll get mine right before takeoff. That's not a test. It's hot. Yeah. I'm hot. Landing lights already on, strobes would be on, and transponders 1200. Zero, zero. We're good to go. Fuel pump's already on, too. Good? Cool. Mansfield traffic, Cherokee 8831 November is taking off runway 14, departing straight out to the east Mansfield. Fly that runway heading. I uh, flew through a flock of those small things before. Traffic, Sky 539 at 6 taxi from the Flight Academy ramp to runway 14, Mansfield. I'll tell you, that YouTube channel makes you incredibly, like, obsessive compulsive. Because I was just turning this with my finger up here. Just for some reason, that's how I can think about it better. Yep. And I'm like, somebody's going to yell at me for that. They're going to be like, <laughs> oh, you got to grab, grasp the knob firmly. I mean, that's the way I do it, too. With your finger? Yeah. Yeah. It's smooth. It's easy. You can feel what's going on. You shouldn't need to death grip it, crank on it. All right, so taking off out of here, besides the GPS BS stuff, how could you tell that you were clear of, like, Boston's airspace, Char Providence's airspace? Uh, well, I mean, I'd pull it up on a chart, and I'd kind of figure out where I was. If, you know, the GPS failed right now, uh, I would just stay well away from where I know they are. You know, I kind of know where Boston is, I kind of have an idea of what that 25 nautical mile arc looks like, and same thing for Providence. Yeah, one cool thing about Boston, too, is if you look at the chart, 495 wraps perfectly around Boston ah. and keeps you just outside of it. So 495 nice. is a good marker for Boston and Providence. Um, you ever look at this, if you pull out, you can even use the iPad, look at the uh, map around like Boston or Providence, you'll see all those magenta flags everywhere. Yep. What are those for? VFR reporting points. Yeah. Good. So can a controller tell you to go to those or report those? I would believe so. Yeah, what would you do, though, if you said, like, uh, report the bridge and you didn't know what the bridge was? I could ask him for that relative to some other intersection or VOR or something. He might give me, you know, a radial and a distance I could find on the map. Yeah, you, or you could literally just say unfamiliar. Cool. I always figure there's so many of those uh, VFR points, though, I'm always afraid they're not going to know the one that I ask about or something. Yeah, I know. I was always wondering the same thing. Yeah, because there's just so many. You know, That's like why instrument flying is nice. It's always a five-letter identifier. They yeah. tell you the spelling or whatever, you punch it in your GPS, you're going to get it. Yeah. So there's 3,500, so we'll pitch power trim to level off. All right. The friction lock's really sticky in this plane. So oh, adjust it. It's, yeah, it's, it's not oh, stuck. Oh, I got it's what you're sticky. saying. The fuel pump landing leg can turn off. We're leveled off a little bit. We'll backpack the... Uh, all right, so say you did Make that, sure and then all of a sudden yeah. this happened. What do you think? I'm looking around. All right, besides I'm that. I'm to hit my best glide speed. Now, think about this, though. You yeah. just flipped that fuel pump off, right? Yep. And that happened. Oh, 
turn the fuel pump back on. Yeah, so do it. <laughs> turn it on. So what do you think the cause of that problem was? A failed engine-driven pump. Yeah, that's happened to me before. Really? Like, oh, hey. Okay, that works. <laughs> yep. Yeah, see? That's that systems knowledge. You know what's going on with the airplane and stuff. It's going to make stuff like that a lot easier. But good, you went for the airspeed, the best place to land. I, honestly, what my choice would have been, if not, uh, like if um, Taunton wasn't there, Yeah. that's a really nice straight stretch of highway. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nice, smooth. All right, let's, uh, I don't care what heading you started at or anything, we'll put this back so we can watch their airspaces. Oops, too far. But go ahead, set me up, let's do some slow fly. All right, slow flight, so I'm bringing the power back. Fuel pump's on, we'll put the landing light on. All we right. just did a turn, so that's our clearing turn. Sounds good to me, I didn't see anyone. Mixture of full rich, because it's probably on the checklist, and it's really matter at 3,500. And we're inside the white arc, so I'll add a notch flaps. Keep bringing it down, 80 knots. Need some troop. And full flaps at 65. And we're holding altitude at 60 knots. There you go, so what are we using to control our altitude and our airspeed during slow flight? Um, uh, the I'm kind of doing both from the throttle. I don't know if that's the right answer. Yeah, so airspeed, I should be pitching for it. Exactly. Yeah, Good. and then altitude for this. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I guess that's what I did when I was setting it up, but right now I'm kind of kind of doing both at the same time. Now, what's one fun thing to do is literally get in slow flight like this. Yep. Slow flight it right into a landing. Yeah. Literally, you know, learn the limits, like even 2.7 Fox, guarantee you, you go up, you start doing slow flight, you figure out what speed it exactly stalls at, power settings. You can be like this, you know, two feet off the ground, and then you cut that power back, and immediately you're on the ground. You stop these things real short. All right, good. Why don't you give me a turn to a heading of 030? Uh, heading 030. Keep it shallow and coordinated. All right, so we do got Boston's airspace to the north of us. Um, now, what if you wanted to go, let's say we were going to Beverly from here or anything, how would you go about transitioning the Bravo? I would look up what the appropriate frequency is for being kind of to the south of the, the uh, airspace, either by looking at Boston or by a local airport, dial them up. I would say uh, Cherokee 8831 November, I'm th four miles to the east of Mansfield at 3,500, would like to transition the airspace to direct to Beverly. All right, good. Now if they just said Cherokee 8831 November, Roger, could you do that? Uh, no, you need the direct permission to, for the Bravo. Ah, good. If that was a Delta or Charlie, you could. Cool. Actually, not if they say Roger. They have to repeat your tail number. Yeah, I said 83 when I remember Roger. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good. Now I want you to give me a turn to south. I want you to just send me down to like 3200 while you do it. Right turn to south, down to 3200. So, in slow flight, are you finding that you need equally the same, more or less, inputs on the controls to get the plane to maneuver for you? Definitely more, because there's less air going over the surfaces. Not oh, good, that just answered my next question. Could have descended a little bit faster, but... Alright. Alright, I want you to see how slow you can get this thing. I don't care about stall lights or anything, you can let that thing glow. Like a Christmas tree. Well, I know I'm going to need that. <laughs> The ACS now, they want you to do it on your check ride without any indication of a stall, a slow flight, which is weird. The PTS used to do with the right above a stall. Yeah. I'm trying to hold the same altitude while I'm doing it too. Yep, that's perfect. There's the light. Cool. I feel a little bit of shake. Nice, that's right on the edge, and that's that right, buffet, so. Right there. Ground speed here is about 46 knots. Nice windy day, you can get this bird barely moving. 40 knots, level on the vertical speed. Nice. It really, really wants to go over. There's a lot of right rudder. All right, go ahead, just bring it uh, bring it back up to like 50 knots so you can get this angle of attack a little more calm. Then what we'll do is we'll transition from here right into a power off stall. So the new way of doing it, um, before you could kind of just go into them, is we're actually going to establish like we're descending in the descent configuration. So yep. you can just bring this back to about 1,500 RPMs with the nose over. And then... We'll actually pick out a deck so you can pick like 2,800 feet roughly and yep. then just do a go to a full stall and recover. So I'll try to hold like a good approach speed of like 60 knots. Yep. 
with a slow descent or with no descent yeah with a nice like literally like you're coming in on final with a okay. descent so you're just going to bring that so I'll bring power back let the nose forward yep and then say like 2800 feet is our deck once we hit that just flare like a terrible pilot <laughs> install yeah it's 55 knots coming up now Cool, now just keep pitching up and let her stall. Alright, and pitch down, full power, right rudder. There you go, nice. Slowly coming out, 60 knots. And we've lost a hundred and something feet. Yeah, that was good. Nice and smooth. Alright. Now, why don't you climb me back up to 3,000 feet. Consider the area clear still. I've been watching while we were doing those turns in slow flight. Uh, let's do a power on stall at 3,000. Just kind of head me a little more away from the Charlie. Sure. So there's 3,000. Uh-oh. Now. It's kind of stuck. There. That's because you're going the wrong way. <laughs> so what we'll do is, uh, now, power on stalls are almost the same thing. You're going to slow down to rotation speed. Then you're going to okay. go full throttle, pitch up. Okay. And let this bird stall. I'm going to gain a lot of altitude doing it, but sure. Yeah, that's fine. So there's full throttle, yep. and coming up there's about 60 knots. And you want me to just crank it back again? Yeah. All right. Yeah, just bring it right go. back, go to a full stall. The light, the buffet, right rudder, and pitch down. Ooh, keep it, keep it. There we go. Good. Now, say uh, you got into a spin. Yep. How would you recover from a spin? Power to idle. Aileron's neutral, elevator neutral, and rudder in the opposite direction of the spin. Good. Very good. And then at the end, elevator, break it. Yep. Hey, have you ever heard of the pair checklist for this? P A R E? Uh, I don't, don't think so. It's literally <laughs> almost what you said. Power idle, aileron's neutral, rudder opposite, elevator to break. Sometimes you actually got to pitch forward for a second. Yeah. Depending on how quickly you recover from it and everything. All right. Let's see. I want to see if you can. Get me, tell me what radial we are off of the Martha's Vineyard VOR. Okie dokie, so I gotta get the frequency in here. And I'm gonna probably, do you want me to go in between the two airspaces or turn around? Oh, you can fly right over Bedford, we'll be high over it. Okay, true, I'm gonna go right in between them. Yep, that's So fine. I'm gonna get the, I'm just gonna get my power set and everything first, if you're not in a rush. No, I'm not in any rush. <laughs> Alrighty, so Vineyard, Vineyard VOR is 114.5, I'll put that in. I'll use this one on the bottom, 114.5. Boom, and boop. I think that was correct. Yep, and BY. Boop. Alrighty, we can take that out, and then we take this. And we should want a You wanted radial or bearing? Radial. What oh, radial we're on. Okay, so... Oh, oof, oof. Um, I think the... This indication for from and... Radial 340. That seems right. Yeah? Yep, good. Remember, radials are always from the station. Yep. So now, say you were lost or anything like that, how could I use two VORs to tell me where I was? Well, if uh, I know Putnam's out of service right now, is there another one I could use? Is Putnam out of service? It was at least a couple days ago. Gardner was. Let's see, hang on. Uh, yeah, I could use um, the Marconi VOR. All right, go ahead, do that, see if you can Which is triangulate our position. Just want to watch my airspace again. 114.7, 114.7. Oh, uh, there we go. One, I never used this one. 114.7. Swap that in there. Listen on the Eight first one. And flight level 420. Ah, Airmet Sierra, yep. update ah. 5. No, I, still, still, well, I still get the code over it, though? Yep. No okay. significant as long as you hit the ID button, which is this. That's why they have that oh. function. Okay. To shut the ID. So if you were talking to a uh, briefer, Georgia, not a briefer, Oklahoma, sorry, flight service station over it. Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia. That's Marconi. Yeah, no, that's you're talking to a uh, flight service yeah. station, that's how you can shut this uh, Morse code off. It's going to make yeah. it a lot easier to communicate with them without that annoying beeping the whole time. Okay, so I want, I'm going to get from indications on both. Let's 
of course this is changing slowly, so now it's about 330. And this needs to be not in GPS, but in localizer okay. mode. What did you call that last time? The, the $20,000 button or something? $500 button. <laughs> That's why you can fail your instrument check right between a VOR approach and a GPS approach. Okay, so I have a 330 on the um, Martha's Vineyard and about a 270 on this one. So draw from 270 out this way and 330 puts me right about somewhere in, in uh, a little bit further this way. Well, there's the airplane. <laughs> somewhere, I was going to say, I was a little bit off. I was kind of thinking somewhere over here. Okay, I'm more looking for the process of you know how to do it and everything. Yeah. Now, I also look outside my window. <laughs> yeah, match exactly. Up the charts. So, that being said, too, you're lost. We're VFR pilots. What can you do visually to help you? Gain altitude. Okay. Um, so you can climb. Circle. Yeah, the circle. Is this the five C's or yeah, the exactly. four C's? Five. Climb, conserve, communicate, comply. So climb and circle. Climb, climb, circle. Yep. Communicate or conserve. So call, communicate, uh -huh. and comply. Yep. And there's even another in one. Instead of conserve, it's uh, just climb, circle, call, confess, comply. Confess. Meaning yeah, after tell them that you yeah. actually got lost. Now. Who could you call if you were lost right here? You're completely lost. You have no clue that's Providence off our right. Uh, the flight service station. Okay. They, it's somebody to talk to. All right, um, you get them, but say you're buzzing around and you have no clue where you are, so you don't even, you can't even pick up a flight service station because you think you're over here, but maybe you're out in like New York or something. You got to totally turn around. I mean, the, the worst case scenario, like if conditions were deteriorating, then I would consider going to 121.5. Yeah, you can even call them up if you're just lost anyways. They're going to be there to help you. We got traffic over there. Yep. Good. So 121.5, what would you say to them? I'm lost. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I guess I would tell them my last known position and maybe the direction I was heading if I could, if I knew that. I need to pop that bad Larry on now. Everyone's favorite part of the check ride. <laughs> Can I do it with a headset on? <laughs> oh, you might need to take it off. I'll take the controls for you. Oh, these Cherokees are so loud. Yeah, I know. Okay. Hey, this is better than what I used on my check ride. This is uh, pretty good. All right. All right, let's see. Just fly heading a south for a minute for now. Try to keep us at 3,500. So, let's say you're buzzing around and everything and you got yourself into this situation right here. What would you do? You know, your VFR, it's, let's say you got like five, six miles visibility. It's still pretty good. It's not perfect. You decide to go up, short little run, go get some breakfast. It's supposed to clear up, get back to VFR conditions, and boom, you got socked in. 180 degrees. 180 degree turn, you know, try to get out of it. Okay. And then, if you don't mind, I'll ask you a question, because I had a comment on YouTube this morning, and I maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Yep. He said to lose altitude. I mean, why would you want to do that? To that know sounds, what's underneath you? No. And you don't know about towers or anything. That sounds like the fastest way to get into a control flight to terrain situation. Yeah, I, seriously. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, um, no. Yeah, so if I had everything in my airplane like I usually do, is this a WASP unit? Do you know? Yes, it is. Yeah, so I, I personally, the first thing I would go for, other than trying to find where, where I was, yeah, um, is the terrain page. There. So I would just make sure that I was clear of any obstacles that might be coming up. Yep. Yeah, no, this that's good. Losing altitude, that's just dumb. Yeah, it, it really is. I couldn't believe that. I mean, I could understand. If you say you're up at 7,000 feet and you know, you know you're yeah. over an area where the elevation's at like 200 feet and you were skirting underneath the clouds, which you shouldn't have been anyways. All right, maybe, but even then, it's just kind of dumb. Yeah. You call up an approach controller, they're gonna tell you where the bottoms are. They'll tell you when to descend. They know all those safe altitudes and stuff. Because, have you even, uh, have you started looking at instrument or doing anything in regards to instrument? A little bit, and Bill and I did some at the end of my training too. Yeah, so, just like we have those, you know, uh, max elevation figures on the sectional chart, you have figures like that that tell you what like min MSAs, minimum safe altitudes yeah, the, are. Yeah, the big in numbers areas. in the quadrants, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we have stuff like those on the low and root charts and everything that tell you, all right, you need to be at this altitude. Now the approach controllers will have that. They're going to be looking at all of that for you and kind of giving you vectors. And vectors are literally just headings and altitudes. Yep. And so they're going to try to get you out of it. They'll be able to get you in. 
And honestly, if you're proficient enough, they'll actually be able to get you on the ground just vectoring you into an airport. They're trained to get you over a runway and into an airport. Do so you think we could request vectors for a practice approach into New Bedford when we do it, and I could do it under the hood? Yeah, I was actually just going to say, well, um... I'd love to do that. Let's see if, uh, I was even going to see if you could pick up the ILS. I'll walk yep. you through an ILS and have you kind of shoot a hood, you know, the basic version of, I'm not expecting you to read an approach plate or anything like that. Yep. But we'll go out a little further, we'll pick up um, some VEC, uh, we'll call up Providence and I'll have them give us the ILS into New Bedford. And Sounds great. And let you try shooting one of those in. Now, VFR pilots, yeah. Even if you don't know how to do this stuff, you don't know how to read the plates, knowing how to program it in the GPS, how to pick up a IL localizer and stuff, that could be the difference between you getting on the ground or not. Because, yeah. you know, obviously you're not going to go up and start filing instrument if you don't have your instrument <laughs> rating. But you get up, you all, you know, stuff happens. If you get stuck in the clouds and you have this ability, why wouldn't you use it? Yeah. If you have the no, like, say you were literally check ride ready but just never went for the check ride. You can shoot an ILS, you know how to do it. Why not? Why wouldn't you? In an emergency situation, that could save you. So, we're going to keep going. We're going to do a couple little maneuver things under the hood. We'll do some unusual attitudes and stuff, and then we'll get you back on. Let's see. So, now, if you were VFR into IMC, same thing, 121.5, tell them your condition. Is that an emergency in that situation? I guess if the minimums technically weren't met, then you're technically not rated to be in that situation, so I would think so. Yeah, exactly. That's the leading cause of plane accidents, the VFR flight and IMC, when people yeah. aren't rated for it. So, yeah, that's an emergency. You know, you can squawk 7700, you can declare an emergency, and they're going to help you. They're going to get you on the ground a lot. You can look up YouTube videos. They come out great all the time. People, yeah. you know, they vector people around, get them in. Um, so see where we're at here. Just need to go a little bit further to get away from New Bedford. Alright, while you're under the hood too, keep keep that scan moving around looking at the instruments. You're doing good. Uh, give me a left turn to a heading of 120. 120. Now when you're turning, what are you looking at here in this bank? I'm keeping it coordinated and I'm looking at my vertical speed to see how much back pressure I need to cancel out that lost lift. And I'm doing a standard rate turn kind of by coincidence here, but I'm not trying to do it quickly just because I want to keep it safe and controlled. Yeah, good. And there's one, two, zero. Almost. There you go. Good. All right, climb me up to 4,000 feet and give me a turn to a heading of 210. Up to 4,000, 210. And there's the heading. Cool. While you're doing that, want to give me that iPad for a second? Yep. Thanks. And there's four thousand. Just look up some stuff real quick. New Bedford 126. I know you have know how to get into towered airports. I've flown with you enough to get in and out of them, so I think you know how to get in ATIS and all that stuff. Uh, there you go. Just keep this heading. Keep it us at 4,000. 126.85. Let's see what runway they're using at New Bedford. Bedford. New Bedford, sorry. This information, Juliet. 225 Tree Zulu. Wind 2106. Visibility 10. A few clouds 12,000. Temperature 2 1, dew point 1 5. Yeah, this, uh, they got an RNAV runway 2 3, and that's got the LPV, so it's like the same thing as an ILS, so we'll shoot that in there. Landing okay. and departing runway 2 3. Hazardous weather information for the area is available high watch, flight watcher, at flight service. Advise right. initial contact, you have ATIS information, Juliet. Alright, so we'll get Juliet, and then we will get the altimeter set and get all that in there. We'll, we'll this call information, Juliet. 225 Tree Zulu, wind 2106, visibility 10, a few clouds 12,000, temperature 21, dew point 15, altimeter 3004. Very good. Localizer back course or visual approaches in use, landing and departing. Alright, so runway 23, 
I'll look up the uh, frequency for us. Providence approach is 128.7, so why don't you go ahead and put that in. Now I'm going to have you do the radios and everything as well. So, just tell them where you are. You can American plug 18, in to New Bedford if you want. Get us direct to New Bedford. Two. And I'll kind of walk you through the approach plate side. Yeah, I think I actually have a pretty good understanding of those, so okay. I'll be interested to see. And then all I need to know is kind of where, we, where we're at here. Um, well, say you're 11 to the south of New Bedford. Oh, okay. I was hoping there would be some marker down here or something I could use. Should I uh, golf in the Indian Tango turn, turn around one just to make it easy on them or call them up? Yeah, here. go ahead. Do a nice smooth 180 degree turn. Uh, so nine, here, Tango Charlie reaching 210 knots. The center instrument three flying. Three you didn't have your turn coordinator. How do you, or sorry, your heading indicator. How would you um get around 180 degrees? Remember all of uh, the standard rate point. turn for one minute. Good, perfect. Nice. I like that you knew that. So yeah, just tell them your um where you are, like 10 to the south or 12 to the south of New Bedford, and you'd like a practice RNAV runway 23 into there, full stop. Yep. And you got Juliet. And they'll just kind of walk you through the vectors of normal stuff. Uh, you have any questions? Kind of point at me, and I'll take a call for you, and then explain it afterwards. Approach course, third RNAV, Yankee runway 23 approach. Providence Road, Cherokee 8831, November, with a VFR request. November 8831, November, prompt to purge, ultimate 3005, uh, safe position and destination. 8831, November is nine miles to the south of uh, New Bedford, and we'd like to practice via, uh, the practice RNAP approach runway 23 in New Bedford. We have Juliet over there. There are nine, thank you, Charlie. Turn right heading 140 on the turn, Providence Airport will be two o'clock and one zero miles. I'll just watch that altitude. This is, go ahead, bring me down to like a 3000. November 8831, November, squad 0445. 0445 for 8331 November. Number 9, Tango Charlie Rogers. Is that 0445? Yep. Now look at the bank you just put in. Don't don't even know contact Boston approach on so now he cleared us for it. So you're going to go to procedures. You're going to go select approach. You're going to choose RNAV 23. Yeah, this, this much I do a lot in my plan just and then for vectors. vectors. And then activate. activate. Number 8831 November, squad 0445. Zero four four five. Yes, yeah. say in the box. Yeah, zero four four five for eighty three one November. Eighty three one November. Thanks. You radar contact on Mount Alpha to New Bedford Airport. Promise all three zero zero five. Verified type of aircraft and also uh, request. What do you want? Type of aircraft and request. So. Request. Okay. Eighty three November is uh, Piper PA twenty eight. We want to practice RNF approach two three into New Bedford. Or 8831 November. Roger. How will the approach terminate? And also, if you look around New Bedford, verify when you have it. We have Juliet over there, and this will be a full stop in New Bedford. 8831 November, Roger, maintain VFR, and uh, continue on your present heading back for the RNAV on the future approach. Maintain VFR on the present heading for 83 November. 09, Tango Charlie, cool. traffic now. Right, you want me to descend to what altitude? Tower, one, uh, two, just go down to 3500 for now. Gotcha. He should tell you, but we're VFR, he knows it's practice, so he'll know we're training. We'll come down to 3500. Basically, there's all this is is a map right here. It's telling you at the points and the altitudes in between that you have to be at. So FURBs, all this stuff like that. If you look down here, anything with that Maltese cross is your final approach fix. Yep. So ZV is our final approach fix. This is a GPS approach, so we can identify every single point with the GPS. Another way we can know we can safely identify points with the GPS is if it has five letters in the name. Yep. So. I mean, it's kind of redundant, but they all have five letters on a GPS approach, obviously. And if you look, it just tells you what altitudes you can be at. So we want to cross ZV at or above 1700. That's what that line means. So now hit that $500 button. There you go. And now when we get in, you can turn this to our inbound course, which if we look up here, it's going to say 235, which it's really not going to change anything. That's more for a bad, uh, reference for you. Okay. So 235 for the inbound course is what we should be able to hold, assuming that there's no winds. And that would bring us in, and then we're just going to follow the glide slope once we get it. That's pretty much it. We're just going to wait for him to give us vectors, and he'll move us around, we'll get in, we'll get down. Great. This is exactly what I wanted to do today. This is just, just a little bit more than I usually do, which is great. Well, here's the thing. BFRs, you know, some people might look at this and say, what? This isn't a BFR. He's doing instrument training with you right now. Well, here's the thing. I could already tell from that first, you know, half hour or so, 45 minutes of us flying around doing stalls, 
steep turn, slow play, all that. You know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about. November 3, 1 November, maintain VFR flight, and 045, back to the final. 045, maintain VFR, 883, 1 November. So, why not spend that time and kind of enhance your knowledge, help you learn some stuff that, if you were ever in this situation, could get you down on the ground? So the heading he just gave us is going to end us up at ZV? Yep, so watch that, 045. And no, not end up at ZV. He's probably going to parallel the course, and then he's going to turn us more inbound to intercept. And at one point, he'll say, you're cleared. Uh, you can, he'll either say, you know, maintain this heading and the altitude until you intercept, or he'll say you're cleared for the approach, which means yep. we can turn on and all that stuff. So right now, we're just going to fly that heading at 045 and wait for further instruction. And I, I don't want to look up because I don't want to kill the illusion, but can you reset my gyro at the whiskey yeah. compass? The hard thing is I look at it from a different angle, so there's that parallax. Yeah. 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 I did 83 one November. Looks pretty good right now. Okay, thank you. This one you got to push it a little hard. Sometimes it doesn't. That's where it usually says it. Oh, I might be thinking of whiskey tango, sorry. Bouncing around the four different planes a day. Yeah, I get it. Now, other than that, we have LPV, which is uh, what you need to have WASP for to get really low. Yep. Down here in this box, 359, that's our feet MSL that we can come down to. What I'll have you yep. do is call Good. out. That's minimums? Yep, that's okay. our minimums. And we need at least three quarters of a mile visibility. Okay. So, as we get down, kind of keep that number in mind, about 360. Round it up to 400. Play it safe. So, is the three quarters saying that the runway is three quarter miles away, or that you? No, we need to have three quarters visibility in order to land. And how do you judge that? The IC determines it. What's that? You determine it. You determine. Really? Just okay. like you determine distance from clouds. Already. I literally know someone who got ramp checked because he came in and uh, uh, whatever, whoever the guy was, I forget. I'm having a brain fart right now. Has said, hey. You didn't have the minimums for that approach. He said you didn't. You shouldn't have been able to get into this airport. And he goes, yeah, I did because I had 91-175. I was in a spot to make normal maneuvers and descents down to the airport. I had the minimums uh, prescribed by the approach bait, and I got visual of the threshold, so I landed. And he was like, okay, you literally can't argue because BIC, yeah. you determine those minimums. You determine what that range is. I mean, really, if you can see the runway, why wouldn't you want to land anyways? Three quarter mile, half mile, I mean, that's going to be pretty hard to judge, but you get used to, especially in fog and stuff, being able to tell. And, sorry, I was like trying to fly at the same time you were talking. Where, um, where is that minimums, where do you have to have that? That's like you come down, if you come down to like, basically, those are your minimum altitude, minimum visibility. Okay, so at that altitude, you need that. Exactly. Okay. So when you're down at four, like say this, you know, 359 feet, you're coming in, you're looking, and say you could see like a tenth of a mile, and you can see the runway in that tenth of a mile, you technically can't land. Huh. We'll put 121.9 in here. That's ground. Oh wait, we should probably put tower. November three one November ten one heading three two zero. Left to three two zero eighty three one November. There, ground's 0.9. There you go. Now keep those turns standard rate, nice and smooth. That's what ATC's planning on you banking at. They're kind of ah. making that angle in the intercept for you. That makes a lot of sense. November 3, 1 November, here for a traffic 12 o'clock and 5 miles opposite direction, altitude and Cape 2000 type unknown. Look. Looking for the traffic, 83 November. There, there's the heading. Now's the annoying part of, I don't know if it was 12 o'clock that way or 12 o'clock that way, based off of the way we were turning. True. Hey, bring us on down to 2,500. Down to 2,500. November 3, 1 November, traffic, no factor. No factor, 83, 1 November. November 3, 1 November, 4 miles to final approach, base signal, thing 260, maintain GFR. Cleared our nav, runway 23, approach New Bedford. Left 230 and cleared the hour now as the Bedford, 831 November. November 31 November flighting 250 join. 250 83 November. There you go. Cool, so keep us coming down. 
And right here, bring us, bring me right down. November, that previously mentioned traffic is now about two miles east of you southwest on out speed still indicates 2000. We're still looking at you through November. Well, east of us is behind us, so I don't really care. Did he say they were southwest bound? I didn't catch it, sorry. No, that's fine. So he told me to fly 250, so I believe that's the, like, the yep, intercept Yep, now see how course, that came so in. watching for that to come in. I bet you did, so you're good to turn whenever you want now. So now match your heading to that, that 235. Bring us down to 1,700. Down to 1,700. And 235 is the intercept course, so right about, or the inbound course, so right about there. Yep. They need to make up a little bit of the cross-track deviation. Three one November advise and you're established on the phone for its course. Established. Yeah. We're established. Eighty three one November. Three one November Roger and uh, that traffic is now about two miles uh, northeast of your current position. It appears that it might be in Bound Three Bedford. Contact your Bedford Tower. Over to Tower. Yeah, we're looking for the traffic in over to Tower. Eighty three one November. All right. So now you're just going to tell Tower you're one mile from ZB on the RNAV two three approach. Okay. And is it still Juliet over there? Yep. And just keep that. Walking in, so go yeah. back to the left. Just uh, let them so know much to are. do. I know. Uh, um, so we're a mile out. A mile from the ZB. Yep. RNAV two three to Bedford Juliet. Yeah. Yep. And we're, that's tower frequency. Yep. Cool. Now just watch the bank. The Bedford Tower, Cherokee eight eight three one of Embers, a mile out from ZB and the RNAV two three. We have Juliet. Track 8813, uh, correction 831 November, runway 23, clear to land, you'll be number 2, fall on touch and go on a midfield left downwind. Clear to land 23, follow the aircraft on touch and go for uh, 831 November. Alright, good. Now, get so to that 1700, hold it. Level it off. Now, because that's where we wanted to be yep. at ZV? Okay. Yep, so see if you can turn to the left a little, re-intercept that, and then bring yep. it back to the right. You're going to have that little bit of a crab angle here from the wind. Now. Once that centers, that's when you can start following it. Yeah, can, when I, your can I turn this off? Because I'm actually kind of yeah, using that and I don't want to be. Yeah. All right, so 996 just confirming, cleared off. 996, you're turning site Cherokee traffic, five mile final, doing a GPS approach. 923, clear for the option. 23, clear for the option, 996. Uh, Tower Cherokee through November. Approach advised us that we had traffic uh, behind us. Looked like they were coming in. Just wanted to see if that was 996 or someone else. And 3 on November, uh, negative. Uh, there is a Mooney about two miles southeast of your position, southbound of the vineyard. I do have a target about 10 miles northeast, indicating 2,000. Not talking to them. All right, thank you, 3 on November. All right, good. Now keep following that down. So bring that power back. We're at the final approach fix inbound now, so we're actually... I was going to tell you beforehand, we just got a little track to side with everything else. We're going to uh, literally configure for landing now. So yep. bring that power back, probably about 1,800, 1,900 for now. And you're actually going to want to put two notches of flaps, and that's our best glide okay. ratio. So we need to get inside that white arc, so I'm just going to bring it away out. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Mixed is full rich, fuel pump landing, it's already on. Good, good. Need to there you go. To the left a bit. Inside the white arc, you want one, two? Yep. One, two. And trim it out. Now we're set up and configured for landing, so it's not going to blow us off the approach course as much. You know, when we're going to be changing stuff during yep. the critical phase when we get low. So just keep it coming back to the left. Now, whenever we're making changes on these glide slopes, literally five degree changes make a world of difference for that localizer part, basically. Yep. We're still to the left, two, three, zero, so we should yep. make up that a little bit. Exactly. And just keep us coming down. All right, I got that traffic. It looks like they just crossed the threshold now. Okay. God, I can't imagine doing this without a um, glide slip information. You just chop it and drop it. It's even easier. Ugh. You just stay on that course and make sure you hold your altitudes. Okay, so right about. Well, that's looking good. Right about there. Good. And there's the logo or the. And now glide slope. you can even slow this up. Come in at about like 80 knots. Take it nice and easy now. If you make any mistakes, they're not going to be as big because you're moving slower. There you go. What's field elevation? Field elevation, good question, my sir. Here is 79 feet. Okay. Touchdown zone 78, in case that foot made a difference for you. <laughs> now keep going to the left just a little bit more. See how it's, it's going to get more sensitive, just yeah. like as you get closer to a VOR. All right. Minimums were 360 feet, take it right down to 400. 
Once you're at four, you have visual. Feels like the wind's from the left a bit. Good. We're a little bit low, but All also right. a little bit fast. Good. So slow us up a little. Don't rush it. Now watch that. See how it's starting to move off to the right? Slowly yep. start coming back. Keep following it. All right, go ahead. You got visual. There's no way to get this off while you're flying. Just oh, there we lift go. it up. Good, yep. Yeah. There you go. Alrighty, wow, that was All right, that was great. Give me a short field landing. Look, I will try. Use uh, use Let's the thousand right footers right. as a displace threshold. See okay. if you can touch the thousand footers. Is that the aiming point bars, or the ones before it? The uh, the just the squares. solid. Yeah, yeah. The we'll pretend that this is all the threshold above it. See if you can touch down there and make that taxi way. Get out of here, birds. 996, runway 23, clear to land. 23, clear to land, 996. It was, a, you know, it, it was, it was a little bit, um, like, um, I don't know what to call it. It was kind of, um, it, it was very much fun, but it was a little bit like I've worked this hard to get really good on the radio, so I sound good. Yeah. And now when you throw me into this, now I sound like a student again. So <laughs> it was a little bit like embarrassing, you know. But now imagine doing this actually solo IMC almost to bare minimums. Yep. You know, an instrument rating is really nice to get from, and it's also one of those things you really have to respect. One of those things. It's very good to have another pilot with you, even if they're yeah. just programming the radio and the GPS. Yep. Whew. Alrighty then. Alright, let's, let's shut her down. Let's go get dinner. Yeah. Oh, my batteries are almost dead. <laughs>